want to bring in now uh, Mini Timuraju, president of NARAL, uh, one of the nation's top advocacy organizations fighting for reproductive freedom and abortion access. As always, Mini, it's great to have you on um, to talk about um, some of this stuff. Let's kind of pick up where Chloe um, left off there um, and kind of paint the picture for us of where we are, right? Less than a year from the Dobbs decision, you had the Supreme Court saying, okay, we're now sending it back to the states, right? And yet now you have this stay from Justice Alito, possibly then Supreme Court maybe weighing this issue if they decide to move forward with it, right? So they're now taking it back to a federal, um, yep. a federal court. Um, where are we at this place in time? How worried are you? Oh, we're extremely worried. You know, we've been planning for this moment since late last year when we found out that Judge Matthew Kaczmarek and Amarillo was going to take this incredibly ill-founded case. Uh, there are standing issues, there's credibility issues, there's scientific issues. Uh, as Chloe just said, you know, Miffy pristone has been approved and on the market for two decades and is the drug used in the majority of abortions and is incredibly safe, safer than Tylenol. But we've always known that uh, the anti-choice movement wasn't going to stop. The extremists weren't going to stop at Dobbs. We knew that they were going to go for a national federal abortion ban. However, they found uh, the voters don't quite care for that, right? We saw it in Kansas, uh, in places like Kentucky even, um, and Montana, that when you take this issue to the people, uh, the people push back and our side wins. So what this case represents is what we are calling a backdoor national abortion ban, a way to get around federal legislation, a way to get around the will of the people and the state's rights. So I want to continue to talk about um, how you're going to work on maintaining um, abortion rights for as many women as possible in this country. And then I want to talk politics um, for a moment, because we do have to talk the politics surrounding all of this. Um, so when we're talking about preparation, right, there is a possibility that you will not be able to access Mifepristone come Thursday morning. You wake up Thursday morning, a young woman finds out that she is in fact pregnant and she cannot get Mifepristone. That may very well be the reality in some of these states, right? Um, CNBC is reporting that some abortion providers are rushing to do, to basically find alternative ways to stock up on different medication if in fact this goes through. Um, some in-person clinics in New York, California, Kansas will offer mifeprestone for now, but are preparing to provide an alternative abortion pill if a subsequent decision essentially bans the drug. How else can people be preparing for this new reality? So there's a couple of things that Democratic governors and AGs have been doing. There's an alternate, there was another case in Washington state that actually directly contradicts the Texas case, uh, pushing the FDA to be more expansive in Mifepristone access. And many of those governors, I think it's um, Democrats in California, Washington state, Massachusetts, New York, and today in my home state of Maryland are announcing plans to stockpile Mifepristone and Misoprostol uh, in the event, uh, some combination depending on the state, in the event that this uh, ban goes through, that this, uh, you know, the FDA's authorization is uh, undermined by the court. So that is one way states are getting prepared. Providers, however, are in a perfect storm of confusion. You know, it's really hard to navigate which state is doing what and how, if you're in your state, you have legal abortion access, why you wouldn't be able to access the abortion pill. But it's important to note that there is another abortion pill. What we call medication abortion is actually a two pill protocol, mifepristone and misoprostol. Misoprostol can also be used alone for medication abortion. Mm. It is not as popular, but it is another way to have access to medication abortion and it will. It is not affected by this case so far. So here's what you told The Guardian, um, if we're talking politics here. Even though some of the GOP are trying to stay quiet about the Texas ruling, uh, back home they're still passing and signing abortion bans. They created this reality. They cannot run away from it. And it also seems Ron DeSantis essentially is trying to run away from it, um, signing this law um, at all hours um, of the night, the six-week abortion ban going into effect having to prove rape or incest um, if you want to get an abortion past six weeks, but only up until um, 15 weeks. How are they going to deal with the political fallout? When you look again, and I keep bringing this up, but it's important to bring up the midterm elections, right? The exit polling from the midterm elections. Abortion was the number one issue. You and I spoke then. We've spoken numerous times um, since then. It might come back to bite them. 
I think it already is, and we're seeing uh, it and how they're reacting. You know, there's new polling from Reuters and Ipsos, 51% of Republicans, this isn't even just Democrats or Americans, 51% of Republicans think this decision by the court is politically motivated and disagree with it, mm. believe medication abortion should not be restricted. Those are remarkable numbers. Our movement has never seen so much support. Uh, folks understand now, and we talked about this before, the longer these bans are in place, the more harm people see uh, happening and that the press is able to report. In Florida, where Ron DeSantis signed the six-week abortion ban before most people know they're pregnant, we saw shocking headlines of a woman who almost died in a hair salon uh, from a miscarriage when she bled out when she was seeking an abortion and could not access one. So the stories are horrifying. The American people are seeing this horror fold out in real time, and they are shocked and outraged. And I don't think there's any way for the GOP to hide from this and the havoc that they've created. Many team Raju, I'm sure we'll be speaking again um, in a few weeks from now as this is all unfolding. Thank you.